Karina and I have finally finished the entire Pretty Little Liars book series by Sarah Shepard. 16 books! Actually 18 if you count these two little spin-offs. So that means it is review time. This video is going to be a full series review and don't worry this is going to be a completely spoiler free review because I know most people have not read every book in this series. I will of course start with a summary and then I want to talk about the reading order and the different story arcs and I will tell you which books were my favorite, which ones were my least favorite, was the series worth it in the end, was knowing everything worth reading 18 books and then I will end by kind of doing a comparison of this book series compared to its TV show counterpart. So if you're interested in any of that, please stick around. Oh my goodness, that's a ton of books. If you have any questions about this series that I don't cover in this video, please don't hesitate to ask me down below. You can always find me in the comments. I will be happy to answer you there. So the premise of the series is that in seventh grade, there's this friend group of five girls and they are led by Allison, who is the queen bee. She's a classic mean girl. The summer before eighth grade, Allison goes missing. And the start of the series actually picks up three years after her disappearance. The other four friends in that friend group are now starting their junior year of high school and the four of them start receiving these really suspicious text messages that are threatening to reveal all of their dirtiest, darkest secrets that only Allie knew. And the person that's texting them only goes by A. And while they are receiving all these text messages and trying to keep their secrets buried, there are things being uncovered about what really happened to Allie. That's the setup of the series and this is classic YA mystery and it's a pretty widely known book series especially because it has a TV show on ABC Family and so people usually have heard about the series but when they hear that there are 16 books they're hesitant to pick it up because that is a lot of books. People just don't even want to start it, don't even want to give it a chance because it's too many books to get through but they're really quick to read. Another really positive thing that I want to make sure that people know about these series is that it's not one long story that you have to wait 16 books to get any payoff from. There are actually three different story arcs. The first story arc includes books one through four and it completely wraps up the mystery that is happening in these books. If you want to stop at book four and not continue on, you will have gotten a full complete story. The rest of the series does not really deal with the same events that were happening in these books. So if you want just a really short taste of the Pretty Little Liar series, start with the first four books. The the second story arc includes books 5 through 8 and in my opinion these books are the best of the series and this is really where the heart of the series lies. The real truth behind Allison and her disappearance and all of these girls and how they are affected by her disappearance are here in books 5 through 8. I would highly encourage you to read 1 through 8 at least and then the final arc is books 9 through 16 and these all kind of deal with something different than what was going on in the first eight books but in my opinion eight books is just too long of a stretch for the arc that was happening here i didn't find myself as gripped by the events that were happening so if you had to skip any of the arcs, I would just read books one through eight and leave it at that. But if you read books one through eight and you really love it and you really need to see it out, definitely continue on. In my opinion, I just think that this is where the series got too dragged out for its own good. The best reminder of which books are in which story arc are just the way that the girls are positioned on the cover. The first story arc, they're just in the center. The second arc has the close-up of their faces. And then all eight books in this final arc is back to a full body shot, but they are kind of just off to the side. And then we have two companion novels to the series. We've got Pretty Little Secrets, which is book 4.5. This is a Christmas special just about what the four girls are up to after that first mystery plays out and is solved. So if you really enjoy the series and you really want a Christmas special, you could definitely pick this one up. But in my opinion, this book doesn't really tell you any information about the series. It just kind of is there as a novelty idea. If you're going to skip one, this would definitely be the one to skip. The other companion though is Allie's Pretty Little Lies and this is marked as book 0.5 in the Goodreads series listing. But do not read it first because this will completely spoil books 1 through 8 for you. This was actually published after book 8 and I would highly recommend reading this one after you finish book 8. It will fill in all of the backstory. This is all about the summer that Allison went missing and what really happened that summer. This is honestly my favorite book of the entire series because we got so many answers. So if you like the series, 
definitely read this one. This was like the most payoff of all of the books. I really enjoyed it. I think that this one is absolutely essential to the series. Since they are really quick reads, I think that it's pretty easy to binge read them and I would suggest reading maybe four books at a time. The first arc, the second arc, and then maybe split that last arc up because it is quite long. I will say that this series is quite juvenile. The first couple of books were a little bit difficult to get into. Some of that stuff is just so like, I'm so far past that part of my life that I don't I didn't care about reading it. So if you really struggle with reading YA about age-appropriate characters, then I think that you may not enjoy this series. But if you don't mind YA, and especially if you like mystery, I would definitely recommend this series. Because this is a series about bullying, there are some tougher topics that are delved into. There is some drug use, there is teenage pregnancy, there are some suicidal tendencies to the characters, especially in the later part of the series. And we also see a lot of characters that struggle with mental illness. That is a strong theme in the series. We actually have a mental hospital that is one of the main locations locations throughout this series. I would say that it's kind of handled more shallowly just because this is a YA series, but it is there and I liked how it was presented. Even our main characters at times, I believe all of them, really struggled with some kind of mental effect from the stuff that they were going through. I feel like every time that I mention Pretty Little Wires in a video because I've been trying to finish this series this year, I always get at least one comment asking, are the books worth reading? For me, obviously the answer was yes because I did finish out the series. I started reading these books in 2010 and one of the reasons that I have stuck with this series is because reading book four I can vividly remember I had to take book four with me everywhere I had to take it in the car I had to read it at dinner because I had to know what was gonna happen next it was definitely a crack book in my experience and several of the books in this series do have that quality to them they just suck you in and you can't put them down so to answer the question was the final book worth it? Finishing the series, was it explosive enough to be like, wow, I'm glad I read those 16 books. In my opinion, I kind of feel like no, it wasn't. Now, I did feel very satisfied with the ending. I don't regret reading all of the books in this series at all because overall I have definitely enjoyed them. I've rated, I think, every book in this series either three or four stars. The reason why I didn't like this book as a finale is because this last story arc of eight books was just drawn out for too long and for it to all be wrapped up in one book and not even in one book because we did not get the grand reveal until like maybe the last 15 or 20 pages and for me after spending that many books with these characters and with this mystery, eight books with this mystery specifically, I wanted more than a 20 page resolution. I needed much more closure than what this book offered. But luckily, there was another big revelation in this final story arc, which came in book number 14, Toxic. There was a big reveal in Toxic. I kind of liked that finale better than the finale in the actual final book. So, I mean, I feel very satisfied, but as a finale, this definitely was not as well crafted as Sarah Shepard's Lion Game series finale, which I loved. That finale was very explosive, very shocking, and I thought that it had a lot of resolution, and I know that she can tell a mystery very well, but for me, I didn't think that the end of Pretty Little Liars was as good as her ending to the Lion Game series. The last thing I'm going to talk about is a brief comparison of the books to the TV show. They are very, very different. The TV show, I like the small town feel that it has, and I really like the actresses who play these characters, but I like the mystery in the books so much better. The books really have a well-crafted mystery behind them, and I feel like the TV show has really dragged things on longer than they needed to, and they just keep having to throw in these small reveals as they go to kind of amp up their season finales, and the reveals that the TV show does are completely different than the book, aside from one. I won't tell you which one. They have done things completely differently than the books in the later seasons. Even if you've seen every single episode of the show, the books are still going to have a lot of surprises in store for you. There are some characters in the show that don't exist in the books, or there are some characters in the books that don't exist in the show, and characters are killed off at different times. I do think that the books do it better, so that is my opinion. I would still, I will still watch the show, of course. It's one of my guilty pleasure TV shows, although I don't believe in guilty pleasures because just like whatever you want to like. That's all I really have to say about this series. This video is already super long because it is a super long book series, but again, if you have any questions of something that I didn't cover, please ask me down in the comments and I will definitely answer you there. If you've read this series, please let me know what you thought of it and did you think the ending was worth it? I only actually know one other person that's completely finished the series and that's 
my best friend. She kind of was who I got into the series with. But if you've read it, please let me know and let me know what you thought. Thank you so much for watching this extremely long video, and I will see you in the comments. Bye!